Good morning and welcome to a really quick bulletin from the Angry Astronaut. But before we get to the bulletin, I need to give all of you very long-suffering folks who ordered some sunglasses from me a quick update on that situation. For those of you who did not order sunglasses, please skip to here. All right, for those of you who did place an order for these, and by the way, I do love them, I can understand why you'd be very frustrated. From the very beginning, I was extremely concerned about trying to handle this in-house. I was even more concerned about using the UK Postal Service in order to do this as opposed to some sort of dedicated service, but the only way to do this affordably, because shipping it via DHL or UPS all over the world was just going to be prohibitive prohibitively expensive was to use the UK Postal Service, or so I thought, and they have let us down miserably. There are a number of you who have not received your sunglasses. I've received your uh, your emails, your DMs, that sort of thing. I am extremely sorry, and I want to rectify this. So, for those of you who have not received your sunglasses and paid for them in full, please send me a DM or an email. The DM can be on Twitter. That would probably be one of the best ways. And we'll go ahead and start working on getting this rectified. While I was away out of town and out of the country, it was very difficult for me to handle this. It's no excuse, though, and we're going to get this handled for you one way or the other. So the long and the short of it is, if you have received your sunglasses, fantastic. Please DM me a picture of you with those sunglasses. That would be awesome. I would love to see you wearing them. For those of you who have paid in full and haven't received them, send me a DM. For those of you who have paid only your upfront payment, just go ahead and once again send me a DM so we can get that wrapped up. Once again, I am very, very sorry for everything that has happened up to this point. For those of you who order any other kind of merch from me, that's all delivered by Teespring. And there have not been any issues with that whatsoever. <sighs> So, what's going on with the ISS? What's the latest update? I made a commitment to you guys to keep you up to date on the current crisis in low Earth orbit. Russia doesn't seem to think that it is a crisis, but don't let them fool you. It is. If anything goes wrong on the station at this point, most probably we are going to lose astronauts in space for the first time in nearly 20 years. That's something that we really dare not risk. So, definitely need a solution. Russia should have their solution in place in a few days, but a lot of people have asked me, and indeed NASA is now asking, can SpaceX solve the problem? Why not just send another Crew Dragon up to the station and have them evacuate the astronauts rather than rely on another Soyuz, which may be suffering from some sort of technical or manufacturing fabrication kind of issue that has caused two consecutive leaks on their spacecraft? Personally, I don't think that's the case. I think it was a piece of space debris that caused this problem, but nevertheless, why couldn't SpaceX just solve the issue? Well, using Crew Dragon would actually be even more problematic, and because it would be so problematic, because it would be so difficult to use Crew Dragon in this situation, it actually creates a whole bunch of other questions as to just how solid are our plans to evacuate space stations, not just the ISS, but others in the future. And the answer isn't very promising. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, three, two, one, zero, and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis. As much as we would like to think that our current capabilities in space when it comes to manned space flight are every bit as good now as they used to be during the time of the shuttle, that simply isn't the case. The space shuttle gave us far greater access to space, at least as far as human missions are concerned, than SpaceX can currently deliver. We had as many as eight or nine manned shuttle missions every year sometimes. Now, granted, 
wanted. That tapered off as time went on, but that made the shuttle a lot more capable when it came to rescue missions. This never actually happened, although tragically it could have happened with the space shuttle Columbia if they had spent a little bit more effort in examining the damage, and if the full extent of the damage had actually been assessed, the shuttle Atlantis could have been dispatched to rescue all of the astronauts on Columbia, and although we would have lost the orbiter, at least we wouldn't have lost the people. That is one of NASA's great failures in their history, and may indeed have been the death knell for the shuttle program. Had Columbia not happened, or had we at least been able to save the astronauts, the shuttle program may very well have continued a bit longer. Now, we are doing things the best way possible now, but the fact remains that at the moment we only have a launch cadence of two crew dragons per year, each capable of carrying only four astronauts, as opposed to seven, eight, or nine shuttle missions, each of them capable of carrying seven astronauts. Our sizable fleet of shuttles and the higher launch cadence that we had back in those days made us far more capable of carrying out rescue missions. A Crew Dragon mission would require an extreme disruption of NASA's plans as far as human missions are concerned and would also have to face an accelerated timeline, a very accelerated timeline that might be difficult to carry out. You have to get the Falcon 9 mission ready and approved and prepped and the Crew Dragon has to be properly tested and prepared for the mission as well, and if you try to rush that process, it could make it very problematic indeed. So the best solution would be to have a Crew Dragon on standby at all times in order to carry out rescue missions should this become necessary. But aside from the fact that NASA doesn't have any plans to have a Crew Dragon on standby, nor do they have the budget for that sort of contingency, there's another very serious problem. Unless you have the proper custom-designed SpaceX spacesuits in place for the astronauts who need to be rescued, it's not safe to use Crew Dragon to pull people off of the ISS. Crew Dragon is specifically designed to be used in conjunction with SpaceX spacesuits. The very things that make these suits so good also make them a problem as far as rescues are concerned for astronauts who didn't have these suits when they went up to the ISS in the first place. They're entirely in-house designed and also custom designed for each crew member to ensure that they fit perfectly. On top of that, they also provide cooling, communications, here protection and flame resistance in the outer layer and finally and most importantly when they're plugged into the seat they provide air for cooling gas and avionics for communications and then finally they also house microphones and valves to regulate pressure and the gloves can interact with the capsules touch screens which means you would need to send these spacesuits up for every crew member that needed to be rescued however none of these suits would be custom designed for the crew members unless you did it beforehand before the astronauts even went up, which means any astronauts who travel up to the ISS on the Soyuz are going to probably be very difficult to extricate from the ISS on a Crew Dragon without the appropriate suits. And by the way, this is also going to be the case for anybody who needs to be evacuated from the ISS on a Starliner. In the future, if a Starliner with crew on board were to dock with the ISS and then something happened to the Starliner, God forbid, like a space debris collision, for example, and then these astronauts had to be pulled off in the future, these spacesuits are not compatible with Crew Dragon. Now, I'm sure that modifications can be made, that all sorts of jury rigging can be done in order to make sure that these spacesuits could interact properly with a Crew Dragon, or at least we could get astronauts off the station in a pinch, but 
but all of those things would take time, a considerable amount of time, which in an emergency situation you might not have. And this whole crisis has kind of brought to light some of the weaknesses that NASA has, and Roscosmos for that matter, when it comes to their evacuation protocols. In spite of its many successes, the commercial crew program does seem to have one weakness. All of these private companies, together with their proprietary technology, do not seem to be extremely effective at interacting and cooperating, at least not yet. Even in the future with space stations like Orbital Reef, if you were, for example, to have a Dream Chaser and a Starliner and perhaps a Crew Dragon also docked with the station, would the unique and customized characteristics of each company's spacesuits prevent them from evacuating personnel from other companies from the station? These are questions that need to be very seriously considered before the private sector takes over low Earth orbit entirely, as they are likely to do in the next 10 years. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, we are well on our way to 100,000, getting so close now, guys. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon or on PayPal so I can keep bringing you on location coverage in the future. And as always, stay angry about space. <laughs>